Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of Council Chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the City Council. Please hand in your completed card to the City Clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any City staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. In accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, please contact a city staff member if you need any assistance. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and tell us your name for the record. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated, and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Follow the city's social media pages so you don't miss out on all that's happening in Goodyear. Thank you for coming to this meeting and being an active part of your city. And remember, it's a great time to be in Goodyear. April 18, 2022, will the city clerk please read the roll? Let the record reflect that all members are present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Almighty Father, I'm asking for your help in providing calm over our country for a society that desperately needs your assistance and moving us forward in a positive manner. There appears to be a lot of anger in the world where some of us have lost the ability to rationally communicate with others to solve critical issues facing this country. I ask you to provide guidance, guidelines to our various elected leaders so that they can successfully address issues facing the nation. I ask you ask for your protection of all our men and women in uniform serving here and abroad, keep them safe while performing their job in very challenging times. In your name. Amen. Amen. We have uh, one communication item tonight. It's an update on the progress made on the 2018 Water Conservation Committee's recommendation. Please introduce yourself. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much for uh, allowing us to share our, our updates uh, this evening. Uh, my name is Andrew Peroni, and I am the Water Conservation Coordinator for Goodyear Water. And uh, tonight we're going to be sharing an update on where we, um, what the progress we've made over the last year in our water conservation and efficiency efforts here in the uh, city of Goodyear and Goodyear Water. So a quick refresher on uh, the, these are just the, pre, the priorities that are set forth by the Water Conservation Committee. Um, I won't be going through every single one in, in, in detail, uh, but um, just as a quick refresher, the link is um, available on our, on our webpage to these. And um, these are not necessarily tasks, uh, checkbox to be completed, but there are more initiatives to be integrated into our continuous conservation program. And we have been focusing uh, primarily on in the last year programs that are working directly with our customers um, integrated into these recommendations. So I'll begin with talking about just our, out our outreach efforts that we've been uh, working continuously on. 
Uh, we now have a fully staffed water conservation and resource team within the last 12 months. Um, we have uh, worked on four water conservation uh, related videos for the public. Um, and those include a on the job with Julie related to finding leaks at home. Um, an Andrew asks video related to where does good your water come from, from end to end. And uh, as well as a rain uh, pause rain sensor video for one of our incentives uh, for our residents. Uh, additionally, um, a video on our Colorado River uh, situation, um, as well as um, you can see also a news article that um, a West Valley View uh, did a phone interview um, with me last summer and published on all the conservation programs that we have offering our residents here in Goodyear. Uh, additionally, um, we have hosted 10 water conservation classes or workshops, and these are public facing workshops uh, that include, uh, one of them included a Goodyear Water 101 course, which was um, displaying information from where does our water come from all the way to end use water conservation to give people a picture of how our water works here in Goodyear and the impact that everyone can make. Um, we typically have between anywhere from five up to 30 plus attendees for each of these classes. Um, and we've also been collaborating with Liberty Water to make sure that we're offering different material because they're, they also have conservation classes that are free. And so we can coordinate every spring and fall uh, to make sure that um, we are offering a, a wide variety between the two of us. We have also attended within the last year six in-person events, uh, the most recent one being the Goodyear Music Festival. Um, and we have uh, reached um, about 600 people in impressions. Um, and impressions here meet, indicate uh, that people were exposed to our content in person related to information on water conservation and efficiency. Um, and within that 600, uh, we've, uh, I would say about 100 or so of that have been more in-depth interactions. So conversations that we're having with the public, with our residents and our water customers about specific programs they can take advantage of. And we have a youth education program that uh, was launched within the last year, and we've reached about 800 students, ranging from fourth grade all the way to high school. Also on our continuing our uh, outreach and marketing efforts, we've rebooted, redesigned our water conservation web pages. So that link there, goodyearaz.gov slash water, is much more now user friendly. Our residents can find our uh, incentives and resources on there, and we try to direct everyone as we can there, because then it leads them to all of our other information. We've had thousands of impressions through our digital outreach. So digital outreach includes social media, things like water trivia online. It could be some emails. Uh, it could be even some advertising that we've done related to specific incentives or programs that we're running or trying to promote water conservation actions. Um, we have a, an excellent communications uh, digital team that's been helping us to get this information out there consistently over the last year. We continue to have our uh, work with our um, billboard and then our, also our solid waste trucks to have the signs on there to keep the, the message out in the community day to day. We're actually in the process of redesigning those to freshen them up for this uh, upcoming year. Um, and this week we're actually launching um, free uh, home water conservation and efficiency kits for any of our Goodyear Water resident uh, customers. And these are going to include um, tools and tips for finding and stopping leaks um, within the home and increasing water efficiency through various means, both indoor and outdoor. And these will be free um, to anybody who's a Goodyear Water um, customer. Um, additionally, I'd like to thank Mayor Brazil for signing the, um, the uh, proclamation for water conservation awareness um, in this Water Awareness Month of April. And we also are sending out notifications to, um, in combination with what our billing department already does, we're sending out some additional information to anyone who has a high water consumption. Um, and we try to get to them in a fairly timely manner so that they can see some resources that are available to them. And that may include some of the other things I'm about to uh, talk about as well. So additionally, we have a lot of other programs, active programs, not just marketing and outreach. We have eight new and expanded conservation and efficiency customer programs that are customer focused where we're typically interacting with them one on one. One of these uh, is a very important one. It's our large landscape uh, water budget program. Uh, so this program essentially is any, any um, large landscape that you see that's irrigated within um, using Goodyear Water. We have a free online platform. We work with a vendor called Waterfluence. And essentially it compares the expected water use every single month of the year and overlays their actual water use. So it shows an opportunity for each of those 
communities, if they're an HOA or if they're a business, where they have opportunities for water savings. Um, and it gives them a better idea, rather than just year-over-year -year comparison, of how much water they need to apply to the landscape this specific month of this year based on the weather. And we have about a 27% engagement rate out of those 125, so we're working on increasing that um, to make sure that as many people who have large landscapes are engaging with this type of information. And also um, on that same one, um, our parks department is also enrolled in this um, and also our ballpark. So they're doing an excellent job already working with their water efficiency using this same platform. Um, in a similar um, type of uh, program, we do the same thing for our uh, residential customers. Anybody who receives an incentive um, or a home visit from, from us, um, we provide them with a home water use estimate. And uh, this essentially just uh, compares what their actual water use is compared to what they would expect every single month of the year. And that's based on um, things such as specific home occupancy, so how many people are in the home, as well as their yard size. So everybody's home is a little different based on the size of the yard, typically, if they have a pool or not. So we create a customized water budget uh, anytime we do a program to help people understand if they have opportunity for savings or if they're already doing a good job. Um, we have the, uh, our smart leak detection program, which we launched last summer, and now we have 101 of those devices installed out there. Um, we're using what's called a flume. Uh, it's, a, it's a device that attaches to our existing water meters, and then it gives information, uh, high-resolution water data through an app, and helps people to uh, see if they might have a leak, helps them to see their water use in much more detail. Um, we will be evaluating this specific program in two aspects, in customer engagement as well as potential water savings after we have about a year of these devices being installed. Um, and this also ties into the committee recommendations related to AMI and the potential for higher resolution water data available to water customers to see how much are they engaging with it, are they responding to it, are they saving water. Um, our customers, our water customers really love this program. Uh, we had one uh, send us an email saying, I've had the lowest water bill I've ever had after installing this device. Um, and then we also have had other water customers who have identified leaks very quickly they didn't know they had after the device was installed. So this is exactly what we'd like to see. Uh, so we're going to be working on measuring those things as the year goes on. Another new program we've launched is our uh, rain pause devices. Uh, so this is a new program. We have 22 of these so far that have been installed. Anytime, if you have an irrigation controller or timer, anytime rainfall hits this device, it'll pause your irrigation in case you forget to turn it off, and it'll stop watering. And then once it dries up, it allows your irrigation timer to run again. So um, even though we don't have a lot of rainfall, that actually makes this even more important. Anytime we have a rain event, you can save several hundred gallons depending on the size of your yard. And then this year, also one of the uh, committee recommendations was smart controllers, and these are weather-based irrigation controllers that adjust automatically as the weather changes. Um, we are very close to launching this. We're finishing up essentially the paperwork part of this, um, and this will be available to our Goodyear Water customers as well. Some other um, important ones, we also have our free home water check. We've done 34 of these so far um, since we've launched this program. In the last year, this is free to any of our Goodyear Water customers, and it involves checking for leaks and optimizing irrigation schedules. That's kind of the two primary things. Um, but also, we'll be evaluating our total water savings um, on this program as well once we have enough data from the visit. We also recently launched, within the last uh, several weeks, a large landscape uh, audit. We're working with a, with a contractor who also received some funding from ADWR um, from the state, and they will be, uh, so we're actually going through and working with our HOAs and some large commercial customers to evaluate if they have leaks on their landscape irrigation. Uh, that's actually happening in progress right now. And because we worked with the, the grant in the state, we were able to do a lot more of these than if we just went out on our own and hired a contractor. So this program is currently in progress. Our landscape uh, guidelines for water efficient development is also in progress. Right now it's um, currently in the final uh, draft stages and then will be sent out to for stakeholder review uh, with the development community within the next couple of weeks. Um, these guidelines, the recommendations from our water resource team, uh, includes limitations on high water use plants and lawn for new developments. Uh, it also includes requirements for high efficiency sprinkler and drip components. Um, and these guidelines uh, will not impact single family homes uh, except for model homes in, in a new development. If there's a model home, then, it, then we have recommendations related to that. 
Also, our meter replacement program on here, it says in progress, we've actually completed our meter replacement program. And by completed, the, the project is now essentially up to where we need to be with our schedule for making sure that our, our meters are being replaced on the timeline that's appropriate based on how they age. Um, and the main uh, reason this is important is it helps to reduce our non-revenue water. Uh, and it also, um, that water loss due to really small unseen leaks that pass through meters that are really old, the meter can't pick it up, and yet a customer might have a leak on their end. So this, the new meters help to catch those leaks in a timely fashion. Um, and then we calculate about 70 million gallons of water will be recaptured for measurement and billing by increasing the accuracy of these water meter replacements. So our water distribution team has been working very hard to get us up to speed. Um, and so we're in a good place with this now. The no discharge uh, water line flushing, this is, um, was uh, ongoing and it's now complete uh, with the water treatment facility that came online. Uh, so when they were um, doing some treatment for the water in the pipes, uh, you can oftentimes see the water is discharged into the street. So this uh, prevented that or significantly reduced that and instead it filtered the water, put it back in the distribution system. So we saved quite a few gallons through this technology um, and we try to utilize this whenever we, we can in situations where we need that uh, quite a, a flushing um, technology. Um, as well, we continue to work on a water loss audit. So this is like a system-wide evaluation of making sure that our system is in good shape. Um, and our distribution team uh, has a contractor that evaluates about 160 miles of pipe annually. Um, and we're seeing the results of this. Uh, about uh, two years ago, our unaccounted for water percentage was about 10%, which is about kind of industry standard, or not standard so much as average. Um, and now our preliminary numbers for this last year when we evaluated for 2022, or 21, excuse me, is uh, around 6%. So we're seeing the uh, results of the hard work that's going into this program. And we continue to do more of the data management side of this as well to make sure we're, we're taking care of our, um, our water that we have in our system. So with that, what are we working on upcoming in this next year? So in addition to maintaining uh, these programs that are relevant and continuing to expand them as much as possible, um, we are going to be working on a couple of key things, our water conservation scorecard. Uh, and this is essentially going to be more of a holistic metric that analyzes a number of gallons that we've saved through all these programs that I've talked about. Uh, typically, we need at least a year of implementation in order to get data that we can see, okay, do we, do we actually save gallons of water from this program? And then we know, do we want to proceed with this program? Additionally, we're going to be focusing uh, more on our commercial, industrial, and institutional sector. So these are um, any of our essentially commercial, non-residential locations that use water. Um, there's a lot of growth in this sector in Goodyear, and uh, we'd like to focus for sure on our low-hanging fruit opportunities for water efficiency, addressing leaks. Um, and so we'll be, um, we're building a framework for a, a program that can help address this and uh, work with these customers very consistently. Uh, our City of Goodyear facilities as well, we need to do an analysis and then assess for any potential for upgrades here, especially as we're asking our, our residents and businesses to be water conscious. We ourselves need to make sure we're doing a good job so part of our goal this, this upcoming year is to work on that and make sure we're identifying those opportunities. We're already working with our, our parks department, our ballpark and our streets, and they've been excellent partners so far in being water efficient and, and being very responsive uh, to uh, the concerns that we have for water efficiency. Um, so that's a really great uh, story as well. And additionally, working on a water consumption dashboard. So this takes our, our water use data and displays it in a way that we can then utilize a more targeted approach for developing conservation initiatives that will really maximize our staff resources and our budget resources. So the more information that we have available to us, the better we can make decisions about where we want to apply our efforts uh, with relation to water conservation and efficiency. So these are uh, some of the main highlights that are coming up uh, this year. Uh, in conclusion, we've, in the last three years, been working quite a bit on uh, launching these programs and ramping up some of the marketing and outreach. So as we'll be moving forward, we're going to be evaluating effectiveness, and we're going to be also addressing all of our water customers out there um, as much as possible. Thank you. Any, uh, any comments? Go ahead, uh, Council Mayor Antonio. Yep, yep, go ahead. Andrew, thank you so much for your presentation. Your enthusiasm for the topic is very contagious and appreciate all the work you've done on the marketing, getting education, the efficiencies. I think we've done 
really strong work on that. And certainly we've increased our staffing on conservation. So it definitely shows that we have a commitment to conservation. As you may know, I was on the Water Conservation Committee before I got on council. And uh, so these, these things are near and dear to me. And I often hear from people who I served with. And uh, one area that, uh, well, actually two areas that were identified as low labor, low cost, but high impact on saving water was the design landscape as well as the tree plan. And so I'm pleased to hear that the design landscape you said is in final draft and that you'll be releasing it to the stakeholders. Has there been stakeholder involvement in the development of the guidelines? The, to, to my understanding at the moment, the, the stakeholders have been primarily our internal stakeholders to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, the, I'm not sure exactly the extent of the external stakeholders. I would have to refer you to our development team to, to find out exactly where we're at with that. Okay. Um, but I know that that's definitely a key part of, of the process. I'm just not exactly sure which point we are okay. in that. So I believe that the uh, development community is the next one that will be um, engaged with to review what our proposed guidelines right. are. Because there were extent, external stakeholders on the initial committee, and so they were yes. actually very, very involved. Yes. And so when they are developed, who will these? Who will this design guideline serve? You said it won't be for single family houses, but will it be for commercial, industrial, and school? Yes, it will impact. Uh, it will impact all the other water customer, all the other classes of water users. We focus primarily on our our um, yes, our, our commercial users, and then our um, industrial uh, parcels as well, as well as our HOA landscapes. Those are our, our biggest ones. Um, schools under the institutional as well are impacted in terms of water, the water, uh, the water efficient uh, landscape requirements um, and the irrigation hardware requirements. Okay. Yes, and the single family homes um, won't be impacted by these guidelines. Um, however, one of the recommendations uh, or some of the recommendations include guidelines for developers who are uh, putting in front, home, front yard uh, packages for homeowners. Right. So um, that's some of the information that will be reviewed with as this process continues to okay. go forward. Yeah. I think some of the frustration is that this, these, this recommendation was developed four years ago and was identified as probably the one that has the single most impact and we still haven't implemented. Did, did you want to say something? Uh, I'd, I'd have to refer you to our development services team to know where we're at. Oh, right. I think he's there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council Member Steve Caraccio, Planning Manager. Uh, thank you for the question. They have, the standards have been a long time coming. Uh, we're, staff is well aware of that. And uh, we apologize. We've been very fortunate that Goodyear has had a lot of development activity. And unfortunately, we've been so swamped with that. But as Andrew said, we are making progress. And as, as you can tell, Andrew has been involved. He, he knows these as well as our the, development services staff. Uh, we are finishing up the final draft now. We will then circulate it to the development community. Up until this point, we've been working with the consultant and staff. We have not had external input yet, but that is the next step. We plan to meet with them, get their input on what we're proposing. Thank you. Do you have an idea when you expect it to be finished? Mayor, council members, finished through the development review and all of that. Ready to implement this year? We would like to finish about summer. I guess the wild card would be the development community's input and their response. We don't want to rush that. Uh, if that takes several weeks or months, we would like to get their input and work with them. Okay. Just been a lot of development that's not subject to improved guidelines. And so just wanted to comment on that. And last, I just wanted to comment that I live in the Liberty District, and I just recently received information on conservation classes that they're doing online. I don't recall seeing those before, so I was pleased to see that they're jumping on that bandwagon, too. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Andrew and our city manager. I would love to see the smart weather based irrigation controller program installed at City Hall. I would like for us to be the 
showcase of what we can do to conserve water or how we can be smart. And I don't know how much we're going to water. I don't even know if we're going to have grass at City Hall, but I think the front part's grass, Park, yeah. I believe so. But when I moved to Goodyear uh, a long time ago in 99, when I contracted to have my uh, yard done, I have a very large yard, my landscaper gave me a drought-resistant plan of what what to plant, what not to plant, when to do it, when not to do it, or whatever. And that's how we chose what we put in our yard. And those plants are still living after 23 years, although I'm having a few pulled out this week because I'm putting in artificial turf. But, but I don't have any grass anyway. So um, I really think it's important that we have available um, guidelines or suggestions on plants to plant because a lot of people do their own landscaping. They can't afford to have the companies come in. And if there's some way that we have a distribution um, area or a pamphlet to give them or something like that, I think that would be very helpful because everybody wants to save water. Everybody, everybody wants to be sure that we have enough water for the next 100 years or so. And um, so anything we can do to have it available for them, a do it yourself or a lot of people are doing things themselves, that would be great. And a lot of us are redoing all of our sprinkler systems, which is the best to put in. We don't have, we don't have any clue. So that would be great because that would save our water as well. Thank you, Councilmember Campbell. Yes, one thing I didn't mention in, in the interest of time, but we are in um, we are actually going to be launching in the next several weeks is communication with every new water account. Holder, oh, great. that exact information that you mentioned. So giving great. information on what programs we offer and um, proper landscape. Um, so we identified the way that the best ways to do that. So now we're just getting the, the things in order so that anybody who gets a new Goodyear Water account holder, whether it's a brand new home or if they're just moving here into an existing home, if they activate an account, then part of that will automatically receive information about water efficiency in Goodyear. So that will be for Goodyear Water customers, not for Liberty. However, we uh, do share our information True. with Liberty. So if they have information that they, it's the same information they need. So we do try to share as much as possible whenever, whenever we can. So, well, yes. if you do do pamphlets, I would like to see them put at our library when we open the new library, because a lot of people go in there and they look, there's a resource wall or something, and that would be very helpful to have it there too. Thank you. Absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's an excellent idea. And we have it at our current library location. Uh, yes, you we do. Have some. That's yes. where I've seen it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we are working on a Goodyear-specific one as well. That'll have just our Goodyear uh, programs and incentives available. So that um, look out for that as well because it will be coming to us. Okay. Thank you thank so you. much. Vice Mayor? Yeah, no, you answered all my questions. So thank you very much for putting it all together. This is a, a big deal. I mean, a lot of our water goes to irrigation. So this is a... A, a big, uh, very important effort for our uh, for our future water. So thank you, thank you, Councilmember Loretano. Thank you very much for um, your presentation. I think it was very helpful and very informative. And I do agree with Laura that uh, Councilmember Kino, because we do need to you know make sure that that gets to those new home buildings with all the growth. And I think there's. Um, on AMWA, on their website, and I know they have resources available to our cities about plants that are good and pamphlets and stuff that we can partner with them and get that information out. And I think that's also very important. And I, we also um, need to look really, at, especially because there are a lot of homes that have been here 10, 20 years yeah. now that people are turning over the landscaping, the housing's turning over and it's dying or getting a little rough looking and and we want to make sure that they pick the better plants a, as well because I think there's going to be a lot more water savings mm -hmm. as opposed to the new builds if we can get these people both Liberty and ours to you know because we all need to save the water whether you're Liberty or Goodyear and you know so I think that's great and I look forward to seeing um, the scorecard and start seeing some of those you know so we can kind of give amounts to the public and and say hey this is how much we saved and this is what an acre foot when we save that's what that means to you is how much we save so thank you guys for all your hard work thank you council member stip i just want to say thank you for the presentation and it sounds like we've got another uh, opportunity for an in focus art uh, entire <laughs> magazine dedicated to water conservation and what's happening with water um certainly a uh, topic of conversation um, as we are all seeing photos of what's happening 
uh, to the upper basin and the lower basin. Uh, but thank you for everything that you've done. Council Member Bray. Uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Only a couple things I have is um, obviously the state is working on the fifth management plan for the AMAs. And so I think it'd be critical for staff just to compare that um, as we roll out the landscaping guidelines, because I know there's been some hiccups there on the state level and we wouldn't want to uh, put something contrary to what they're trying to do to, to conserve water as well. Um, in addition to that, uh, AMWA is a, a good idea, but you know we can go straight to the Nursery Association and the landscape guys, and I think it'd be good to get their input. They're the guys that are actually putting this stuff in. They know the plants like the back of their hand, and they'll tell you also if you know some plants have just kind of expired. They're not in the market anymore and what they're looking at. So um, I'd be happy to help you with those resources, but I think it'd be worthwhile. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I also, there's not a whole lot to add from all that discussion except to say thanks for the presentation. And uh, water is going to be some of our biggest challenges going forward. And anything we can save is just the list we have to use. So, again, I appreciate the effort on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda items within the jurisdiction <laughs> of Goodyear. City Council, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. That makes it easy then if there's no speaker cards. Well, the clerk, uh, let's see, we've got the. Uh, will the clerk please read the uh, consent agenda items two through eight, please? By Number title two. only. Number two, approval of minutes. Number three, recommend approval of a request for a new Series 10 liquor license for a quick trip located at 1540 North Bullard Avenue, Goodyear, Arizona. Number four, authorize the city manager or designee to execute the memorandum of understanding with the United States Secret Service regarding cyber fraud task force joint operations. Number five, approve the intergovernmental agreements for basic animal control services between Maricopa County and the city of Goodyear. Number six, approve the acceptance of a special <coughs> warranty deed and issuance of an easement associated with the Sedea development. Number seven, approve expenditure of $1,127,500 for space solutions for public works and related budget transfer. Number eight, adopt resolution number 2022-2221, approving the development agreement with Goodyear Air Park Industrial Development, LLC, providing authorization and direction for execution and providing an effective date. Does anyone on council wish to move an item from the agenda? Seeing none, can I have a motion and a second to approve items two through eight? So moved. Second. <laughs> Did you get it? No. no um, step. Step in Hampton. Yeah. Now you got it, right? We're good? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. There are four public hearings on the agenda. First public hearing item is the use permit for convenient use Chipotle Mexican Grill restaurant with drive through I'm going to open the public hearing. Welcome back, Steve. Please introduce yourself to the public. Good evening, Mayor and Council Member Steve Correccia, Planning Manager. Tonight we have a use permit for a Chipotle Mexican Grill. This is our location right here. We're in the Canyon Trails Town Center. That's basically at Yuma and Cotton Lane. Parcel right here, a little over one acre. Uh, these are the two banks. This is Pottery Barn. Uh, this was the former Home Depot site. Now it's going to be about a 284 unit multifamily apartment complex. Uh, Cotton Lane right here. Nearest residential is about 600 feet to the west within Canyon Trails. Access to the site, all the roadways, as you can see from this image, are improved. We have a traffic signal here at Canyon Trails Boulevard, as well as here, one of the main entrances into the center. Uh, this parcel will also be served by basically kind of three-quarter access here, right in, right out, and a left in. And then they can traverse through internal drive aisles into the center and get to the pad here in the proposed Chipotle. And this is an overall view of the Canyon Trails Town Center. It's about 91 acres. And again, here is Yuma Road, 
Cotton Lane with north to the top here. This is the pad, this area right here. Overall, the zoning was approved in 2005 and all four commercial uses at that time. Uh, it's been amended, and again, this former Home Depot site will now be multifamily. Uh, so tonight, action, it is a use permit for convenience use, and that is the drive-through portion of the proposed Chipotle restaurant. Again, it's about a 1.1 acre parcel. All the surrounding site improvements are complete, including all the drive aisles and parking spaces. Building itself, a little over 2,300 square feet for indoor dining. Also have a 500 square foot outdoor patio. And this is the development plan for the Chipotle. This is the existing parking field here. This is that undeveloped pad. This is that access point off of Cotton Lane. So people can come in, enter the site. They'll enter the drive through lane here. And with Chipotle, it's not your typical conventional drive through All their orders will be placed on their app. So you will place an order, get a pickup time, and then come pick up your food. Here's the window here. So that's your first stop. They have about 11 cars here that they can stack here in the drive through lane. And then folks will exit here. Again, they also have the indoor dining and outdoor patio that's available. And this is the proposed building. Being in the Canyon Trails Town Center does have approved design materials and colors. So Chipotle did incorporate that into their design. And so for the use permit evaluation, uh, two main things we look at. And with this one, we found that this is a commercial center intended for these types of uses. So it'll be similar to several other drive through restaurants within the Canyon Trails Town Center. Uh, traffic and queuing all internalized to the pad. There should be no impacts to our city streets. And again, the nearest residential, 600 feet to the west, across Cotton Lane. Uh, also, convenience uses have additional criteria. And again, we look at the parcel size. That 1.1 acres will fit the Chipotle, the drive through component. All of that will fit on site. Hours of operation, late morning to 10 p.m., seven days a week. Given a residential is 600 feet or so to the west, staff's not proposing any restrictions at this time. So if they did go to a 24-7 operation, that would be permitted. Offsite improvements, those are all complete, and <clears throat> staff did not identify any other concerns at this point with the use permit. Uh, citizen review notice, notice for this public hearing, all done in accordance with city requirements. Uh, to date, staff has not received any public inquiries or opposition to this item. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission heard this item on April 6th. Uh, no public opposition voiced at the Planning Commission hearing. Uh, with that, we, are, we do find that it meets all of our evaluation criteria. Uh, staff and the Commission, we are recommending approval of this item subject to the seven stipulations in the staff report. Uh, Mayor, that concludes my presentation. Staff is available for any questions. Is the applicant here and would like to speak? Thank you, Mayor, Council, staff. Uh, my name is Nathan Cottrell with CACO, um, 12409 West Indian School, Avondale. Uh, we work hard with staff. Um, this is just what you see. It's a typical Chipotle. Um, our, well, everything up there says it's a drive-through. It is what they call a Chipotle lane. It's their magic marketing. Uh, so there's, uh, they've done studies on their other Chipotle lanes. There's only six or seven cars at the most stacked in here because you do have to order ahead of time. There's no order window or anything like that. So our 11 cars queuing there is um, more than adequate. No, no potential um, backup there. Um, we feel it's a great, great spot. We're looking forward to selling burritos as fast as we can. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. All right, thank you. Any any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Is there anybody in the audience like to speak? Seeing none, a closed public hearing. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the request for a use permit for a convenience use Chipotle Mexican Grill 
drive through restaurant on approximately 1.13 acres parcel within the Canyon Trails Town Center zoning pad commercial subject to stipulations. So moved. Oh, second. Open for council discussion. Councilmember Campbell. I have a question, Steve, on slide number five where you show the, the um, way you go in to pick up your order. Where is the parking at this restaurant? And I'm just maybe, I mean, we're talking about a use permit. I know, I understand that, but I don't see much parking here. And it is a sit down restaurant, right? It's not just a drive through. Mayor and council members, yes, it does have both the drive through and sit down. Okay. The existing parking field is, it does not show it on this slide, but this parking is in. There's also parking here to the south. They also have, being in the Canyon Trails Town Center, uh, shared access, shared parking. So all. So they just park anywhere around it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know where the door is to it? I just am trying to get my bearings on how it's where it's going to face. Is it going to face Cotton Lane, or is it going to face the parking lot to go in the door? Mayor and Council Members, the front door is in this area here. So there's the patio. Uh, the front door here. So okay. all of this parking, customers can park in any of these spots, traverse the parking lot, enter the restaurant here. Uh, and this is the Chipotle lane right here that, mm -hmm. and the window here that faces north. Oh, I'm glad to see that there's a lot of parking because the location now at, at uh, McDowell and Litchfield doesn't have a lot of parking. Even though you can go park at Wildflower Bread Company and walk back if you want to, but... It's hard to find a place to park, so that's wonderful. Thank you. Kano? I just want to say it's going to do so well. <laughs> Vice Mayor? Good. You're good? Um, yeah, welcome to Goodyear. Uh, we got the discussion. Yep, got one here. All right, Councilman Stip. It's not necessarily a question or an issue with the particular project because it's exciting to have it. Um, and I know the drive through is relatively new, so it's, I'm happy to have that as well. This is more for Steve and the rest of the staff. Um, what we're referring to as Cotton Lane is going to be the frontage road of the 303. And I think we need to start talking more in that terminology as that's becoming closer and closer to reality. Um, instead of we will have access off of Cotton Lane, we're going to have access off of a frontage road. Um, so we start getting that message out about the 303 being an elevated expressway running through there um, as we progress through that piece. That's just an observation that I think will help us with the story in the future. But welcome. This is going to be awesome. And I know my future son-in-law is very much looking forward to it. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next public hearing item is a rezoning of approximately 156 acres located southeast of Australia Parkway in Yuma, known as the Fulton Homes at Ballpark Village, from planned area development to planned area development. Open public hearing. Please state your name. Good evening, Mayor Pizzillo and uh, Council. Christian Williams, Senior Planner here with City of Goodyear. Um, before you this evening, I'm here before you this evening with a request from Ed Bull. Uh, one is to conduct a minor general plan amendment on 121 acres of property within the city. The other is to conduct a rezoning on 156 acres of property within the city. If it's all right with you, I'd like to present items 10 and 11 together. Go ahead. Thank you. So the overall property we'll be discussing today is approximately 156 acres and it's located in Central Goodyear in the Ballpark Village on the southeast corner of Estrella Parkway in Yuma Road. The property is within two general plan land use categories, one being neighborhood and the other being business and commerce. I'll touch on those on an upcoming slide. The property is currently zoned within two PADs. Um, the property is currently, um, the combination of those two, uh, the land use, underlying land use category for those is commercial, industrial, business, park, and retail. And I'll go into more detail about those on the other slide. But the overall property, just for 
The reference is here. It's an upside down L shaped right here. This is a stray anuma. Zooming in a little closer, you can see that the project is, again, upside down L shaped. The parcel is south of the Sentara neighborhood and a vacant city center parcel, which we'll see come before you next month as a project called Ballpark Village North. It is north of the Goodyear Ballpark, Ballpark Parking, and a vacant parcel within the city center air park. It is west of the city owned Bullard Wash and the case that you just rezoned last month, Anton at Ballpark Village, and it is east of a vacant parcel within the city center southwest. You'll likely see that case come before you um, probably this summer. And as a note, the property does not fall within the Phoenix Goodyear Airport DNL or noise area. To remind you of this property's context within the greater ballpark village area, I will show you this map. You'll recall that last month you had a zoning case on the east side of the wash. Today we're talking about this portion here on the west side of the wash. And again, in the next coming months, you'll likely see a case due north of here and due west of here. For some history on the zoning of this property in its immediate area, in 2006, the eastern 121 acres of the property was zoned city center air park planned area development, underlying zoning of that being commercial and industrial. In 2007, the Goodyear Ballpark and Ballpark Village was first zoned adjacent to the site, and subsequently the ballpark was constructed. That's right here. And uh, in 2008, the western 35 acres of this property was zoned city center southeast planned area development. The underlying zoning of that is business park and retail. In 2021, in response to new development being interested in the, uh, in the area, in City Hall being relocated now north of I-10 here in a couple months, a major general plan amendment occurred in December for the former city center overlay, which also includes the western 35 acres of this site. That was since um, removed from city center overlay, and it is now a neighborhood with a village center overlay on top of it. So the first request of the applicant is a minor general plan amendment for the Ballpark Village Northeast area. That's item number 11 on your agenda. The applicant is requesting the general plan land use designation for this eastern 121 acres. That'll be this section here in the blue. Go from business and commerce to neighborhood to match that of the 35 western acres, which is neighborhoods. This is being done to facilitate the development of a single family residential master plan community. And currently, the single-family master plan community would not be permitted on this 121 acres of site because it's single-family, and single-family is not allowed within business and commerce. Additionally, the developer desires to ultimately develop this cohesive master plan without Goodyear Boulevard East going through it, which is this would complete the city center loop, so Goodyear Boulevard East would go right here. They would like to remove that from the transportation and land use plan so that they can build this master plan community cohesively. Finally, as a result of the city center arterial loop not being needed in order to serve what was formerly going to be city center, the request also modifies Goodyear Boulevard north and east to change that from city center arterial to other streets. It leaves the northwestern quadrant of Goodyear Boulevard East intact <coughs> as we have a vacant city property here, Desert Edge and the Goodyear Recreation Campus. And it requests the modification of Goodyear Boulevard West and Goodyear Boulevard South in the Southern area to convert that from city center arterial to other streets. Moving more into the zoning case, which is item 10. If the minor general plan amendment is approved, the applicant will seek to rezone this property into again, a single family master plan community called Fulton Homes at Ballpark Village, and it will be a planned area development. That would include the entire 156 acres of the property. This development proposes to be gated and will include four housing types. 15% will be a 50 by 120 foot wide lot or deep lot. 15% will be a 52 foot wide lot by 100 foot wide. Those two are very similar to our one six reduced category. 25% will be a 45 foot wide by 90 foot wide, which is very similar to our R14 category, R14 reduced. And 25% will be a 35 foot wide by 110 foot a deep lot, which is similar to our R1C product or an alley loaded product type. The remaining 20%, if you're doing your math, uh, can be 
incorporated into any of the lot categories so that there's a mix and diversity of product. Now let's discuss the PAD on the next slide. So I stated in a previous meeting, the vision is still that Ballpark Village is a walkable area and the individual developments within it are unique but feel cohesive within the area. While a majority of the communities in Goodyear are completely surrounded by solid walls, similar to the Anton case, the goal of this development is to have views into the community while balancing the privacy of the individual residents. The conceptual map above illustrates this. A majority of the walls along Wood Boulevard will be partial view or full view fencing. On Lower Buckeye Parkway, a minimum of 40% of the frontage fences shall be partial view fencing. A minimum of 20% of the lots along Estrella and Yuma Road must side onto those streets to provide some diversity in the lotting. And 50% of the lots along Estrella Parkway and 35% of the lots along Yuma Road shall have view fencing or partial view fencing to allow views into the community. This provides peaks into the development so you can see the architectural character of those homes. You can see from the conceptual here, in the yellow and purple are the partial view fencing and view fencing. The blue or teal is the solid fencing. And then again, walkability is important and street character is important. This development is required to have small blocks. For example, you'll see in this conceptual map that there are no cul-de-sacs or lots of small blocks to give it that village feel, an urban feel. And even though this development is gated, there's a desire for residents to have easy and convenient access out of the community. Uh, to enjoy the trails, get to the nearby retail that we'll be developing. So a minimum of five pedestrian connections are required to Estrella Parkway, Yuma Road, and Lower Buckeye. Three are required to the Bullard Wash. Two are required to Wood Avenue, or Boulevard, excuse me, which will create a minimum of 10 pedestrian connections out of the development. That's an example on this slide. For amenities and streetscape elements, the development will have three major park areas, north, central, and south. Minimum amenities are defined within the planned area development document, but to give you an example, the north amenity park will include an aquatic center with lap lanes, a leisure pool, a kids pool area, a pool building with restrooms, pool ramada, shaded lounge seating, shaded tot lots, gathering ramadas with picnic areas, barbecue plaza areas, bocce ball courts, cornhole, multi-surface turf areas, and the two other major parks will have some very nice amenities within them as well, with the exception of the pool. There'll be one pool in this development. For streetscape elements, the developer will need to a variety of amenities to support the diversity of the lots in the community. The requirements are based on the city standards, which are in our reduced standards, such as the R14 reduced in the zoning ordinance. By way of example, in order for them to build their R45 product, the developer will need to build a minimum of five of the following. Detached sidewalks with at least one tree between the sidewalk and the home, paver driveways on the homes, park line streets with street parking, enhanced entry roads into development, pre-plotted homes to maximize the diversity in the elevations. They will construct the Bullard Wash Trail on the city-owned adjacent property. I'll touch on that in a minute here as well. And the construction of the Ballpark Village Monument on the southeast corner of Estrella Parkway and Yuma Road. I want to point out three of these items. The developer intends to utilize bright and primary like colors as base colors for the residential structures and elevation so this neighborhood will appear vibrant and not just a variation of gray, gray, grayer, tan, tan, tanist. So that's what they plan to do. The developer in their zoning has agreed to build a public DG trail in the Bullard Wash on the west side of the wash, similar to the Anton case you saw last week. The city does not currently have that funded and the developers stepping up to build this for the use of all Goodyear residents. And finally, the developer was very familiar with the former city center plan. Thus, they have incorporated many walkable and visual elements into this development to provide that continuity of sense of community. They particularly remember the former mayor and the city center committee members working on theming each of the four city center corners. To pay tribute to that work, they will work to incorporate the theme that was originally envisioned for the southeast corner of Australian Yuma. That theme was rock and vegetation. And the theme, they will be working to bring a mural into the base monument that matches that theme, as well as incorporating it into the landscaping that's in front of it. Of note of this um, monument, if you will, it incorporates materials from the existing ballpark and it's, um, it's, it's, 
tame so that the, the mural itself is the pop and the art is, is visible. As it relates to Goodyear Boulevard East, a small portion does exist. You can see that on the map right here. You can't drive, you're not supposed to drive on it, but anyways, as part of the zoning case, when the road is abandoned, the, the developer will remove the existing portions of Goodyear Boulevard East, incorporate a portion of that into their property, as you can see over here, and the remaining portion will be landscaped and given back to the city. Really quickly, I wanna jump off the zoning case and discuss just the overall area. I do wanna to quickly touch on retail because I know that's really important to our city and our residents alike. Ballpark Village has over 60 acres of commercial either entitled or seeking to be re-entitled. In the core area immediately adjacent to this site, there are 53 acres of commercial and mixed use opportunity right around the ballpark. This yellow, the ballpark, the red is mixed use commercial. For comparison, because you're like, what's 60 acres? Westgate Core is 13 acres if you don't include the parking. Westgate and all its parking, not including the city lots, is 59 acres. Park West at 99th and Northern, retail, not the apartments, is 47 acres. Tanger Outlets, 37 acres. Scottsdale Quarter, one of my favorite, 28 acres. Ballpark Village Core, 53 acres. Additionally, when you hear the Ballpark Village North case next month, you're going to see a proposal for 10 additional acres of commercial. Both of those would be in walking distance of this site. And for any developers or retailers listening, this trade area has 4,200 units that are entitled or in the entitlement process, very hungry for retail, so we're ready to go. So to date, the city has not received any resident opposition to this case, only calls with general inquiries. Staff has evaluated the impacts of the minor general plan amendment and proposed zoning to the greater community. And with no major concerns being found, staff have recommends the approval of a minor amendment to the general plan, land use and transportation plan, and subsequently rezoning the property from two planned area developments with an underlying zoning of commercial, industrial, business park and retail to Fulton Homes at Ballpark Village planned area development, subject to stipulations found in the staff report. Of note, this case contemplates improvements to Estrella Parkway, Yuma Road, other streets, as well as contributions to signals at Lower Buckeye Road in Bullard, Lower Buckeye Road in Wood, and, Estrella, uh, and Goodyear Boulevard East at Yuma, as well as modifications of the signal at Estrella and Yuma. The applicant is here. They do not have a formal presentation, but they are here, and I'm happy to take any questions on this case. If you opt to vote for these cases, I'd ask that you vote on item number 11 first, which is the minor general plan amendment, followed by item number 10, which is the reason. That was going to be my question. Uh, the order, how's, how's this going to work? Because I went ahead and, and opened 10 first. Right. Attorney? Mayor, I believe that's correct, that you'll have to close the public hearing for 10, open the public hearing for 11. Can they vote on 11 before they vote on 10? How do yeah, I do this? Have to handle 10 first. Say that again? You need to handle, well, no, the general plan has to go first. So you need to open 11, move to 11, open 11, handle 11, vote so on 11, then move back to 10. Close 10. You can close 10. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close 10. Move to 11 for the public hearing. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead with the uh, Public hearing item on the Ballpark Village Northeastern Area Minor General Plan Amendment. Open that public hearing, correct? Yes. And Christian's already given that presentation. Applicant is here. Do you need want to add anything at this point? Air Council, Ed Bull, please approve both. <laughs> That's perfect, Ed. Thank you. Okay. Any speaker cards? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, would the, anybody in the audience like to speak? No, no backup, Ed. <laughs> All right. With that, I'll go ahead and close. Norm Nichols, the president of Fulton Homes. He has about two hours worth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold that one off there, Ed. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Go ahead and close the public hearing on 11, right? Will the city clerk please read resolution number 2022? 2228 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2228, approving a minor general amendment to the Goodyear 2025 general plan to amend the land use designation of approximately 121 acres generally located south of Yuma Road between Goodyear Boulevard East and the Bullard Wash from business and commerce to 
neighborhood and to amend the classification of portions of Goodyear Boulevard North, Goodyear Boulevard East, Goodyear Boulevard South, and Goodyear Boulevard West from City Center Arterial to other streets and to delete a portion of Goodyear Boulevard East, requiring an amendment to figure 8.12 land use and transportation plan map in Chapter 8 of the Goodyear 2025 general plan and providing for an effective date. Can I get a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-2228? So moved. Second. Yeah. Open for council discussion. If anybody wants to start it off? Go ahead, uh, Council Mayor Loritano. I'll start it off. Well, thank you very much. I can't really see Ed because he's behind the, the pole there. Um, and Kristen, thank you for your presentation. Um, this area has been um, just dead for 20 plus years because I was on that city center committee and that was a long time ago. And um, I'm glad to see something moving forward because this is going to now reinvigorate that site. Um, that's going to make the, the commercial, you know, have reasons to come there. Um, I really do like this plan. Um, I like the fact that it's going to be a little bit chic. It's going to be a little bit different. And that's what we wanted there. Not just like you said, tan, 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 gray, gray, and gray. So I, I do appreciate that. I appreciate the different sizes of houses. Um, and I think it's really important that um, the people know that this is not taking the commercial away from the ballpark. There's still going to be that commercial around there. There's still going to be the ability. This is going to make it walkable, and this is going to actually fill it in so somebody will want to open a business there because there's not a lot of businesses there for the public. There's um, You go down the block, you, there's a little strip mall there that doesn't always, I'm surprised it survived because it's just kind of on the corner of Buckeye. So when we have people come to ball games, they don't have anywhere to go. And there's going to be a lot of people, especially in this housing market, that are going to look for this product, that are going to want to be there, that are going to want to be down near the ballpark. And then as the commercial comes, going to want to be now where those are going to be stuff to do and, and fun things. So I can see this as taking off and being a really, really good asset and I like I said I like the fact that they're going to have the amenities there um, when we talk about the water and everything if you if you have a community pool those are great for people to have because then everybody isn't having their own pool um, a lot of these yards aren't big enough really it's really expensive to dig some of those pools so I do appreciate that I appreciate the tot lot I appreciate the cover the bocce ball gives some variety there um, the fact that they're going to add into the hiking trail to keep our trails master plan and ability that all citizens can use that, kind of hike down through the Bullard Wash and connect. So I think there's very a lot of positives here. Um, and I, like I said, I'm glad to see something happening in that land. After 20 years, when you go to a game, it, our stadium looks kind of sad. They're all lonely. So I will be glad to see something start to come out of the ground. So thank you very much, and I support it. Anything else? Councilmember Stipp. I really want to echo uh, Councilmember Loritano's comments about the area and what this will do for it, um, and to really applaud Fulton Homes for taking a, uh, a, taking a chance uh, on this piece of property uh, before we could even get to this point today. Um, as I mentioned in our small group meetings that we had several months ago, um, Fulton, and I'm going to do a commercial for you, and, and no, no payback for this, but Fulton builds a, builds a really good product, and this is, um, I'm glad we've got another Fulton property, another Fulton project occurring in the city, um, and I hope that um, the activity that we've gone through with this sparks you to, to do more. Um, but this is a great project for us, and to get this area developed is kind of a, about time, so I'm looking forward to approving it. Councilmember Loritano, work it around here. You mean Please, Kano? Excuse me, Kano. I'll get it. Right. <laughs> okay, I know. Kano, yes. <laughs> kind of get, getting used to this. Well, I'm thrilled to see a single family home project coming in uh, and is certainly one of this caliber, and it's definitely going to be a huge catalyst uh, for transforming the, the area. Uh, last week when we talked about the Anton at Ballpark Village, we, we got on a little side conversation about the monument. And the city manager was thoughtful enough to include in our weekly report about the public art, which is we we had agreed to it. I, I, I have to bring it up again today. I think my my angst with it is the gray and the brown, the, the two most controversial colors lately. Um, we're doing something so vibrant, and I think that's probably where I'm, I'm getting stuck. But uh, for what it's <laughs> worth, I, I would urge uh, you to contemplate 
the inclusion of elements from the ballpark stadium itself as opposed to perhaps the team buildings. So, um, Christian, thank you for the comparison of the retail, the acreage and all that. I, that's just such great information. It's very encouraging. And we've been fearful that we've been losing out on it. And I think this has a potential to be something very great. So great project. Very exciting. Thank you. Councilmember Kenner? I agree with Kenner? everything. Everything? Good? That's it. Vice Mayor? Yeah, no, I agree with everything as well. I, I think Fulton does a great job uh, with their products. So looking forward to that. And I appreciate all the additions and the walkability and helping Bullard Wash uh, become a, a great amenity for the city as well. And also, I do appreciate the comparison to the commercial. That was my, my fear. I just want to make sure that we have the commercial there to also sustain all the residents that will be there as well. I think it will be a really nice a really nice place, especially at the ballpark as the anchor there and all the residents and all the multifamily that's going in there. So I'm looking forward to that area to develop. So thank you. I also think it's going to be a great project and welcome, welcome to the city, especially for this project here. With that being said, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now, um, Mr. Attorney, do I have to go back up and open back up the uh, hearing for 10, go through that process again, or? No, no, Mr. Mayor, you've already closed the public hearing, so just move back up and uh, you're going to do the resolution first. Just do the uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. City Clerk, please read the resolution number 2022-2229 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2229, declaring as public records so those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled Official Supplementary Zoning Map number 21-13 and Legal Description and Fulton Homes at Ballpark Village Planned Area Development, March 2022. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the resolution 2022-2229? So moved. Second. With that, open for council discussion. We good? All right, with that, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, there's a, an ordinance as well with number two. Oh, is there an ordinance? I keep flashing back and forth here because we started out a line. All right, where are we at? Um, page eight, number 12. No. No? Page eight of your script. Oh, okay. We did the second. Oh, city clerk plead read ordinance. Is that what we're talking about? Oh, yeah. 2022-1535? Yes. All right. By title only. There we go. Adopt ordinance number 2022-1535, conditionally rezoning approximately 156 acres, acres of property located the southeast corner of Estrella Parkway and Yuma Road to be known as Fulton Homes at Ballpark Village, Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, providing for penalties, and directing the city clerk to record a copy of this ordinance. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the ordinance 2022-1535? Second. All right. Open for council discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right. Now we get to 12. Thank you. Uh, the final public hearing item is a zoning ordinance text amendment for drive through restaurants. Um, let's see, open public hearing. We are postponing this public hearing until our regular meeting on May 2nd. Done? Correct. Right. All right. Business items. I would like to remind council to wait for a motion and a second before discussion. First item on business is the creation of a general plan committee to assist in the development of the general plan update. Stephen Carici is back. Good evening again, Mayor and Council Members. Steve Carici, Planning Manager. Uh, we also have with us tonight Matthew Kleisiko with Michael Baker International. He is leading the consultant team that is helping us with this update. And Mayor, the next two items do concern the general plan. I do have one presentation that I can give if okay. that is. That's fine. Thank you. So the 
two items are the creation of the general plan committee and the community outreach and communication plan. And real quick, just the background, we are required to have a general plan and those are effective for 10 years. Uh, that will include all our goals and development policies. Uh, and it needs to represent a comprehensive and long range statement of the community's values and priorities. Uh, as such, public participation is very essential to this process. Uh, the process has started with the last general plan ratified in November 2014. It is time. And our goal here is ratification by May 2024. One of the important steps to help us is the creation of the general plan committee. Uh, interested members will apply, and those applications will be reviewed by council and appointments by council. Uh, the committee will operate under bylaws, and those bylaws were included with the agenda packet to the council. The committee will have uh, several responsibilities and duties. Uh, one of the main uh, duties that they have is to provide advice and guidance and input to staff, the commission, and council. Uh, right now, we're proposing 15 members with two alternates. And all those members would need to meet the criteria as established in the bylaws. Uh, basically, uh, 12 must be Goodyear residents for at least a year. Uh, the other three can be uh, business owners who own or operate a business within the city or a member of a governmental agency that has activities within the city. Uh, the other item tonight was the participation plan, and we are required to adopt procedures for the general plan update. And uh, that participation needs to be comprehensive throughout the city. Uh, we'll also coordinate with uh, other jurisdictions, agencies, and organizations. Uh, within this plan, the city is obligated to implement all of those items that are identified in the plan. Uh, but we can always add more items, so staff and the consultant We'll work together to identify new opportunities that present themselves. And so major components of the public participation plan, uh, the branding, the project website, print and social media, that will be occurring here soon. Uh, there'll be several rounds of workshops, uh, digital engagement, uh, media releases, and public notices. Uh, working with the general plan committee, like we just mentioned before, as well as we'll have several work sessions and hearings before the Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council. So the first phase of the plan, we're kind of already getting near the end of that first phase, and that kicked off with the meeting with the executive team. Uh, we have the two items before the council this evening. Uh, we have a first open house planned for <coughs> April 28th. And we're also working on the existing conditions report right now. And so next steps, we're hoping for the adoption of the two items here tonight before council uh, that we can then get started with the recruitment for the general plan committee. Uh, the consultant staff, we're working together for that open house coming on the 28th. And again, we're hoping to finalize that existing conditions report here soon. And with that, Mayor, that is the overview of the two items. Uh, staff and the consultant are available for any questions. Thank you. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? City Clerk, please read resolution number 2022-2240 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2240, establishing a general plan committee to assist in the development of the general plan update. Providing for termination of the General Plan Committee upon the completion of the General Plan Update. Adopting bylaws for the General Plan Committee, authorizing staff to take all actions necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and bylaws and establishing an effective date. Can I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-2240? So moved. Second. Open for council discussion. I got it. Vice Mayor. Really just a comment. I was on the last general plan committee. It was a great opportunity. So for those listening online, 
um, it's a great opportunity to be part of the city's future for the next 10 years and understand the layout of the city and really have your give your input on the future direction of the city because staff will go through this and this is their what they look at to plan and and, and lay out the whole the city's vision in a way so so yeah so i think it's a great opportunity um hope a lot of people get involved so thank you i've got a quick question when do you plan to advertise for people to apply and when do you plan on having the application close so that we have some idea of when we're going to be meeting to appoint them mayor council members we're hoping to very soon we will work with the city clerk's office to uh, start once we have approval tonight we will start that process okay so do you want them appointed within 30 days or 60 days what, what is your time frame what are you looking at mayor and council members as soon as possible okay council member Kent, no we're good all right then um all in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. I guess number 14, you've already covered your presentation. Uh, the item is on business is, uh, is the adoption of the general plan and community outreach and communication plan. Uh, any speaker cards on this one? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Seeing none. Uh, with the city clerk, plead read ordinance, uh, read resolution number 2022-2241 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2241, adopting a community outreach and communication plan for general plan update and establishing an effective date. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. A second. To get it. Open for council discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, number 15. The item, the next item is First Amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement between the Maricopa County Library District and the City of Goodyear for the operation of the Goodyear Library. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Nathan Torres, Parks and Recreation Director. I'm joined this evening by Diana Vasquez, who, there she is. Um, she's my lifeline for this evening, phone a friend, uh, whatever we want to call her, but uh, um, she's here to help answer any questions that, that I may not have for you this evening. Uh, tonight I'm requesting uh, council consider an amendment to the existing IGA with Maricopa County Library District for continuation of library services. Tonight we'll be discussing the history. We'll talk a little bit about fiscal impact, um, future operations, and then of course uh, staff recommendation. So, so Goodyear and the county have had a longstanding uh, partnership uh, going back to as early as 2006 when we initiated the initial IGA uh, for county to come in and, and operate library services for Goodyear. Um, I believe it seems just like yesterday we opened our first library in 2009. It was at the current uh, City Hall site um, and it was approximately a thousand square feet and it was the little library that could. Um, and uh, it was very busy, um, and we soon moved into our new space, which is 10,000 square feet. It's our current space now, um, in 2014. Uh, Maricopa County uh, operated the library for free to Goodyear from 2009 to 2016. Uh, typically, this free arrangement is intended for communities of less than 50,000. Um, it's important to note that when we opened our new library in 2009, we were well past uh, that threshold. Um, however, in 2016, uh, MCLD notified the city that we would be 100% responsible for library operational costs moving forward um, since we had well surpassed that 50,000 uh, population threshold. Uh, consequently, prior to executing the new IGA with MCLD in 2017, Council evaluated two options for continuing library services. Uh, these options included, number one, remain with MCLD under a new IGA, uh, or two, transition to a Goodyear-operated library. Um, after careful consideration, Council decided to remain with MCLD and execute a new IGA in 2017 
as it was determined to be the most cost-effective, customer-friendly approach for continuing library operations. Uh, the, the 2017 IGA was for an initial term of five years with one additional five-year renewal option, which brings us to today, uh, requesting to execute the additional five-year renewal. Real quickly, by the numbers, our, our library is a very popular destination uh, on average. Uh, these are pre-COVID uh, numbers, and we're still recovering. Uh, however, on average, uh, we have 100, over 142,000 uh, visitors to the library. Um, we're projecting, as we move into our new Georgia T. Lord Library, 24,000 square feet at the new Civic Square, 25% uh, increase in the first year, um, bringing that, that total visitation to 175,000. 93% uh, rate the library services as, as good or excellent, and then they have a ton of materials, um, as you can see here, to serve our users. In terms of fiscal impact, um, currently we pay, the cost is approximately $820,000 to operate our 10,000 square foot library, um, and that covers 52 hours a week of operation. Um, at the new library, um, increasing from 10,000 to 24,000 square feet, um, increasing hours uh, by 12 to 64 hours a week. Uh, that cost projection is 1.4 million. Um, that is currently in the city manager's recommended budget that you'll be reviewing over the next uh, several weeks. Um, it should be noted that should the additional service hours uh, not be approved. That's going through as a supplemental this year. Um, should that not be approved, that 1.4 would be adjusted to reflect the current hours of operation, which are 52 hours a week. Um, and that difference would be uh, about a $75,000 reduction from the 1.4. Just real quickly, some amendment highlights. Uh, this amendment extends the the IGA until 2027. It's important to note that there is a 180 day out clause. Um, 180 day out clause by either party to, um, to terminate the contract. So should the city or the county wish to change operational direction at any time during the course of this IGA, um, either party can execute that as long as uh, we provide or 180-day notice is provided. Uh, so it does provide uh, uh, the city and the county with some flexibility moving forward uh, should our needs change. Um, and then it just, uh, the amendment does some housekeeping. It changes the name uh, to reflect the, the new library, Georgia T. Lord, and uh, uh, changes the location to Civic Square. In terms of where we're headed for the future, um, as part of the current city strategic plan, the city will complete a library master plan by 2024. This plan will provide three things. Number one, provide recommendations on continuing to contract out library operations or to self-operate. Number two, identify future branch locations, timing, and costs. And number three, identify any future needed services that are needed. And with that, staff would like to uh, recommend that uh, uh, council consider executing the First Amendment of the IGA between MCLD and the City of Goodyear as we anxiously await the opening of our new library, the Georgia T. Lord Library, that is truly like no other uh, this summer. And I'm here for any questions. Thank you. Um, any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Anybody in the audience like to speak? Seeing none, um, can I have a motion and a second to approve the First Amendment of the Intergovernmental Agreement between MCLD and the City of Goodyear for the operations of the Georgia T. L uh, Lord Library? So moved. Second. Who's the first? Right there? Okay. You got it? All right, with that, open for council discussion. Go ahead. Um, 
Thank you very much. And I am very excited. We all got a tour of the building, including the library, and it is coming together so wonderfully. I am very excited. I know Wally, as friends of the library, has got to be like thrilled to death. It's just going to be great. Um, I appreciate the partnership with the county. I really am glad we're extending the hours as well. And I think that's really important because I think this will be a great place not just to bring kids and people to study, but this is a great place for people who are working at home to get out of the house and be able to work in a quiet environment. And so I am 100% for this, and I think it is going to be fabulous. So thank you. Vice Mayor. No, I agree. Everything that Councilwoman uh, Laura Tano said as well. So we're really looking forward to it. I know my family uses the library a lot, so all the programs and, and the books and all the education. So we're looking forward to it. Um, really, I really do like the partnership with the county. I think they do a great job also. So uh, looking forward to this and, and being in that new library soon. Thank you. Councilmember Campbell. Well, I was initially opposed to extending this to 2027, truthfully, because I was hoping that we would have our master plan done in plenty of time so that we could make the determination whether to continue on our own or to be under their their purview. Um, the, the heartburn I had with the county was that when we had COVID, they shut the library down. We missed out on supervised visitation that we occur there. We missed out on the EL and ESL classes. We... Um, we did a lot of, 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 we took away where our residents really use this as such a resource center, which we don't have. And um, that always worries me because they take their direction from the county supervisors and they're the ones that say if they can open or close. Whether we're paying the bill or not, apparently it makes no difference. So that's why I had a concern with it. Um, I'm happy that we are going to extend some of the hours because a lot of the parents have told me they can't get off work um, early enough to go to the library in the evenings, and they enjoy doing that. So I'm glad that we're going to do that, and I look forward to having the um, – master plan and, and, and seeing where we are in 2024. How long is the master plan going to take? It's probably no more than six or seven months. Okay, because we have to give them a six months notice if we decide anything. And if this goes through to 2027, we have to make some kind of a determination by the mid of 2026. So we would and uh, we have been very transparent with the county that that the city will uh, examine and explore uh, future operations sure um, so so they understand that and uh, um, uh, part of the study also will help us identify a smooth transition plan should the city wish to take that step sure um, in terms of timing does it take yeah. does it take six months does it take 12 months yeah uh, my guess is it's probably about an 18 to 24 month process to transition services very smoothly. Oh, I would suspect so easily, yeah. I just don't want them to hold us host hostage so that we can't move forward if we want to do that. And that that's a concern of mine. So thank you very much. Councilmember Bray. Uh, I have no problem really with, with entering into the first part of the IGA here. Everybody talk about the hours, and I, I wonder that, um, you know, maybe that is the right path. But I question here we are going to move from a 10,000 and we're going to double our size and should we be extending our hours at the same time or should we be focusing on the move, getting the kinks worked out and pushing that back here? But that's just, uh, like I said, I have no problem moving forward, but I, I question if, if that was, is going to work out the best for us. Mayor, Council Member Bray, we're all in. Council Member Kano. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board. I think we've had a good working relationship with them. I know it's going to be hard pressed. You're doubling the size, which means yeah, there'll be a little growing pains as it's going through. But uh, you got a brand new facility, and uh, I agree with Councilmember Campbell. There are people that really need those extra hours to get in there. So I got confident in the staff. You'll be able to pull it off. So with that, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. The next item is the WYYERD Connect LLC Fiber Optics Telecommunication Right Away License Agreement. Please introduce yourself for the public. Mayor Council, 
Justin Fair, Chief Information Officer for the city. The agenda shows uh, Linda Bills, but uh, um, we, uh, we've we been working and partnering with uh, our legal team, so we do have um, legal. If there are questions um, specific to legal, you uh, she is here to be able to speak to that. Uh, Lisa is. is uh, Wired is here as well, if there are questions uh, for them. They do have a representative here as well. So with that, um, you may be asking why I'm here uh, speak, speaking to the uh, legal agreement here, but it's really a few weeks ago uh, to, we had a conversation on a broadband study, and I wanted to come and just kind of uh, show how it relates to this agreement that we're looking at. Um, just a quick summary of findings. Um, one uh, big one that was identified was that we have Goodyear, Goodyear has two broadband uh, service providers currently available and um, to, to service Goodyear to provide those broadband services. Um, we're limited in fiber south of MC85, um, which is a consideration for tonight's discussion. And um, we're limited in consumer options for the wired broadband access. So as we look at service providers, um, it's relevant to this conversation. Um, and then looking forward next steps um, that we also discussed in that uh, session was our phase two of next steps, looking at grant opportunities, um, infrastructure investment, policy um, exploration is one, and uh, possible um, uh, city code changes. So those are things to come. Um, as we were Working through the broadband study, um, Wired had engaged the city um, about uh, possible expansion of services um, into the city. So timing um, worked well um, that we completed the study. Um, and then um, on the legal side, Wired was working through our legal team on their proposed agreement. And what we wanted to do is highlight a couple of the benefits um, in the existing agreement um, from the resident side. Um, they, Wired has a goal of providing fiber to 25,000 households within three to five years. That's their anticipated time to build out their network. Um, and they have agreed to not pass those construction costs along to the residents. Um, so the service offering when you sign up with them would be the cost there. Um, to the city of Goodyear, um, with the in-kind agreement, it would provide access to fiber uh, to be used by the city. Um, around 56 miles of dark fiber for us to be able to utilize, um, which is crucial for us. We would use that uh, for services such as business network services, connecting our fire stations, um, it, um, it, city facilities, our critical infrastructure, water, wastewater, SCADA sites, those things. Um, it also provides conduit infrastructure in strategic locations where we currently don't have that infrastructure in the ground. Um, and that's to support traffic management as we're looking to um, complete um, some holes in infrastructure there. Um, they have agreed to providing that conduit infrastructure in the ground so that our traffic engineering team can pull that fiber to connect those signals um, and further complete their build out. Um, and they've got to propose 31,000 linear feet there. I wanted to briefly go in and show just a couple of maps to help um, get an understanding of what they're proposing. Um, this is a, a large view, um, and this is not all Goodyear, but this shows what they refer to as their backbone. This is essentially what um, provides their core services throughout the region. Um, and uh, through the agreement, the city would receive two pairs of fiber across this backbone. Um, so if you notice one thing there, it goes very far, very, uh, far south um, into um, Shady Mountain Ranch. And that's an area that we don't have either infrastructure or fiber today. So um, it's extremely beneficial to us um, as a city as we look at future growth and expansion, um, uh, both on the city side, but as well as the water, wastewater discussions. And then this map, it's very busy. So I'll take a, a quick second here to highlight it. Um, the yellow outline is the, uh, um, that's the area of the city of Goodyear. And the other color to pick out there is that orange color that you'll see. And that's that uh, backbone that I just referred to. So you see the overlay there. Um, and this would provide, um, and you see those uh, kind of black outlined areas. Those are the proposed neighborhoods on the, on the current design. Um, and so those would be the areas that would uh, gain that, those 25,000 households that would gain uh, access to this service once it's pulled in. So um, with that, the city would receive one pair of fiber to those neighborhoods. So again, um, we have um, facilities and sites located throughout the city that are currently um, connected via different means, and this would give us a, a more efficient means to connect those sites for, for business and city uh, purposes. So um, 
with that, um, just to highlight the staff analysis of the agreement, um, the, it would allow WIRED to operate as a fiber network uh, within the city. The license would grant the necessary rights of way access. The fiber optic network serves, uh, would provide high bandwidth infrastructure to residential enterprise and small and medium businesses within the city. So not only residential, but also accessibility to businesses. Um, and with their proposed design, it does um, help get the uh, fiber to that. Uh, we referred to last conversation, middle mile to last mile. Um, with their expansion, it would help to close the gap in a lot of those areas as well. And then in lieu of the annual fee, the city will receive in-kind fiber and conduit, as, as previously discussed, and both the fiber and conduit will improve um, our overall network connectivity. So uh, from our perspective, from the staff's perspective, there's benefit, um, sub substantial benefit to residents, as outlined in supports uh, from the broadband study, um, as well as to the city for infrastructure services. So um, with that, like I said, if there are any legal questions, um, I will defer those to Lisa, who can uh, uh, step up and answer. But um, with that, I will um, turn it over if there's any questions. Thank you. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. <clears throat> Anybody in the audience like to speak? Seeing none, um, will the city clerk plead resolution 2022-2232 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2022-2232, authorizing the city manager or her designee to execute the license agreement between the city of Goodyear and Wired Connect LLC, a Delaware limited liability company, providing for the city manager or her designee to execute amendments to the license agreement associated with minor Scrivener errors and to enter into separate agreements for in-kind exchanges of fiber conduit. Can I get a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-2232? So moved. Open for council discussion. Where do you want to start? Right here, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I think this is fantastic. Uh, I think it's a great, a great thing for the city, especially coming on the heels of our presentation that you had, especially getting it up all the way up to Australia Mountain Ranch, which is which is huge as well. I know I've been talking to you guys with with Wired for about six months to try to get this across the finish line. So I'm really glad that we were able to come to a agreement with them and also the city. So it's best for both sides of the, the parties. So I'm just, yeah, very excited about the connectivity that's going to be coming to the city, um, more options that our residents are going to have, and, and and it's a great win for the city and the residents. So thank you. Councilmember Campbell? I couldn't tell on the map um, how far north their lines were. It's hard to say. And also, is there some way that you can get us the names of the neighborhoods that it's going to be going into? Because a lot of people will ask, are we getting it? And we need to know what neighborhoods are going to get it. So, but how far north do you go? Are you up, are you going past Camelback or to Camelback that far north? So we're going all the way to the north. Um, so that orange line you can see comes all the way through the top of the city. Uh, we can give you, we do have a breakdown of all the neighborhoods we have prospected right now. Um, the great thing is this is where we begin. Uh, our, our focus, our goal being a, uh, a, a company developed and built here in a valley is to serve the valley. So when we have, while we have what we have designed up there, um, the goal is to continue to grow out, to continue to support each community individually. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I'll provide that for you and just know that as we continue to pair, uh, and, and do this with the city, we will look for opportunities where if there's underserved, or areas that you know it's hard to get fiber to. We'll work with you to figure out a way to do that. Right? That that's that's our goal. Um, so uh, more than happy to do that as well. Okay. So are you the yellow or the orange or both? So the the orange is our backbone, and then those black outline polygons are what we first drawn in to pull right. into each mm -hmm. each area. Yeah. Okay. And then the yellow squares are actually each. Uh, cabinet so we can serve up to 10,000 households out of one cabinet today when you look at normal communities right neighborhoods you see in in your in your city you'll see these cabinets all over all around different neighborhoods we're just gonna have two up in Australia and you can see how they break out around the rest of the city sure okay and I have one more question um, when you build your fiber are you going to build it in the road we are not 
Our goal is to build our fiber um, at the edge of the right of way, which is right. We're trying to go right behind the pavement, right, right behind the sidewalk. We're boring. We're we're missing all the utilities. We're also deploying, uh, which really a really amazing thing to talk about tonight is the latest technology in uh, lidar. Uh, we have a company uh, that's a that's uh, a part of us called uh, Be Exact, and we're running that vehicle through all the cities. So we're mapping. 100% of the city when we're doing this as well, so that we're making sure that we're right at the edge and missing all the utilities and providing uh, the le least amount of disturbance uh, to the city as well. Wonderful. Thank you very yes, much. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for the presentation. I think it's a great deal here. With that all being said, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. The final item on business is the construction phase service award for project 35003 police building phase two. Introduce yourself, Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Jimmy Rodriguez, Chief of Police. So tonight I'm here um, wanting to give a quick overview of what's going on with operation or police operations two building and ask for the expenditure of funds so we can continue on to our next uh, our next phase of our building and start the construction soon. So with that, uh, just a quick overview. The addition of phase two is uh, just over 27,000 square feet, as you can see there. On the first floor, it will uh, house 43 officers to include our, our internal uh, invest, or I'm sorry, our investigations division. Um, That'll consist of 16 offices and 27 cubicles on that first floor. Uh, there'll be an, an additional writing uh, desk there so people can actually write reports uh, or they can um, have people come in and fill out information that's needed, especially for our investigations division. It'll also include a training space on the first floor, uh, which will consist of a range. Um, Second floor space will be 33 personnel, which will encompass the office of the chief. It'll also have our internal affairs office, um, and along with our our administrative our administrative offices, uh, which house our our MAs, our admin assistants, and and so forth. Uh, that'll consist of 15 offices and 18 cubicles. And uh, we talked a little bit about our shooting range. However, uh, we'll now be able to do our annual qualifications there, either in low light or in daylight, uh, which will be good because we won't have to go all the way out to the Joe Foss range um, periodically to get those done. Some of the on-site improvements, we will uh, build a canine training area that will have um, an area large enough for our training, but also to be able to incorporate more advanced training uh, with our canines and to also have the elements or the the structure needed to keep them out of the heat and the elements. Um, we'll be able to do our physical fitness uh, testing for our recruits and our also our special assignments unit there, not having to go out to the ballpark and use the parking lot there. We'll actually be able to do it all in-house. Uh, we'll be expanding the secured parking lot to the south. There'll be some drainage improvements that will be made um, along with uh, the expansion to the south of the, the parking lot there. And then we'll also be able to add new cameras and recording system to our security uh, areas there, both uh, to the rear and then along inside. A little bit about the project budget. Uh, we did come back uh, February 7th, 2022 for our GMP-1 to purchase those long lead items that you approved so we can have those available. Now we're coming back for the GMP-2, which is the balance for the construction. Uh, and I can uh, say that we're within the budget there of the 22435000 for the entire project, including the previous authorizations. A little bit about the schedule and the timeline here. As you can see, uh, we're currently in the design phases wanting to move forward. It's in permitting right now. Um, with the approval tonight, we're hoping to move forward with construction starting in September of 2023 and then closing out the project. Um, I'm sorry, going into construction of September 2022 uh, and then closing out the project in 23. 
So with that tonight, we're asking for your approval for the expenditure of funds of $17 million and, and um, 700 or $17.7 million uh, to start the construction services, obviously uh, order any new equipment that we need. Along with that, the art will be uh, taken down and replaced out front and then also any site improvements that we talked about and so forth. With me tonight is uh, <coughs> program manager or um, uh, Troy Tobison that's here in case there are any questions there. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions if you might have some. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Anybody in the audience like to speak? With that, can I have a motion a second to approve the expenditure of funds up to 17 million seven hundred ninety-two thousand seven six one for construction services, equipment, art, site improvements, and associated activities for the remaining scope of phase two of the police operation building. So moved. Did <laughs> you get the first? Okay. We, yeah, we're good? Okay. All right. Open for council discussion. Go ahead, Council Member Campbell. It's been 17 years that we've worked on this building together, Chief, and I cannot believe it may work. We may have it, and I'm just so excited. Every year I've asked and asked and asked, and I'm so happy to see that, that we might just get that second floor. Yes, Council Member Wally Campbell. Yes, I'm very excited also. It means a lot to us. It brings us all together in one place. Yes. Um, and it'll be uh, wonderful to have it finalized and completed. So we're really looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, the public safety committee that I served on in 2006 and five and six, that was our number one recommendation. The second one was the ambulance that we're finally going to get. So it just takes us a long time, but we're just so excited. This is wonderful. We always wanted to get the police together in one spot because they're all over the city. And we just thought it was really important that we had our own police station. So. I'm going to vote yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor. No, I think it's great, too. I, I really appreciate it. I remember the old buildings that we've had, and this is definitely a step up and, and much needed with a growing, a growing city. I had a quick question. Is the, is the, um, the range, is that underground or is that on the first floor? Because I thought in my mind it was on the underground. No, it'll be on the first floor there to the south of the building. Okay. Okay. Just want to clarify. So yeah, I'm all on board with it. Just excited to get it, get it started. So thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Cano. Nothing. No. <laughs> that was sure. that, that was the question I was going to ask there, Councilmember Bray. Uh, no, let's get her done. Uh, and with that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank, Thank you, Mayor and Council. Does Council have any comments, com commendations, or reports, or current events, or requests for future items? Vice Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to request a work session on the um, just the airport, the history, where we're at with, with it, what, what the agreement is with Phoenix, and just the potential future of that airport there. Does, that, yeah. have to, does that have to be a work session, or can we just get that in the yellow can we, paper? Can we get an executive summary or something? Yeah. Yellow paper? I, I know that. I think they have a lot of information, so I'd like to see. Because also, I mean, I did take a tour. I know there's, there's a, a plan in place, and I know some other people on the council haven't been have we haven't had a, a session a work a meeting on that in the few, in the past so well let's survey anybody want to uh, yeah anybody else um, I'm also interested in knowing kind of the history and where they are and what their their vision is uh, it's an integral part of our community it's a huge asset for us and I feel like I don't know that much about it so we probably need to set up a scheduling with Phoenix itself to make sure that their schedule will meet with our work session to get them in to do the presentation. I'll, gonna, I'll work with the team to work with them to get that scheduled. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, anything else? Go ahead, Council Member Stiff. 
just to update on some uh, current events, you know, with uh, with Valley Metro, we're undergoing the budget process, so I get to do this twice. Um, the new CEO is on board, though, and I think she came to the manager yeah, and mayor's yeah. thing. So that uh, Jessica Mefford Miller is making the rounds. That's very encouraging to everybody in the Valley. Um, hopefully we um, will see some uh, some changes through there. Um, I did um, I did want to throw uh, kudos out uh, to uh, Tammy and the gang over at uh, Communications. The last um, in focus that came out with the did you knows and all the rest of that, um, despite the increased number of complaints that we have received over the last few days. Um, we don't hear from the people who appreciate it. And uh, believe it or not, I was stopped at church and uh, told, number one, that sounds like you had something to do with it, which is kind of ironic. But secondly, they really appreciated the information. They don't necessarily agree with it uh, because not everybody likes the development and the pace at which we have grown. But they did appreciate the information, and I think that's really important. And um, and I think it's important for us to kind of recognize the work that, that went into that with uh, Tammy and her folks. So um, please pass that along to, to the group up there. Um, but what that did highlight for us as a fallout from that was we have also received a number of complaints about the road conditions in, in the city. And I know we're trying to take steps in the CIP program to do it, but um, we, I think, have to become super aggressive um, to start addressing these transportation uh, issues that are that are coming up. And um, I know there's a number of projects in the CIP. Uh, some of that is stuff that we can fix. Uh, sorry, Hugh. Some of it is traffic light related. Some of it is traff is roadway condition. Uh, some of it is stuff that we have just flat ignored because we thought we would let growth pay for itself and. And we now have experienced uh, that that doesn't work. So um, I hope that we take uh, take that kind of under advisement as we look at the CIP pro uh, program for these next upcoming years, and figure out a way for us to communicate with the residents the things that are that we're aware and the things that we're trying to do um, to catch up because we're not solving it, but we got to catch up. Um, but. Uh, it's been uh, it's been an interesting week as a result of that, but um, I th thought it was important to share the the kudos on the in focus. Thank you, Males. I'd like to to second that. That's one of the things that I really think we got to uh, work on. And when we do it, when we get with our communication staff and all that, because they do an excellent job getting those messages out, is to make sure that we let people know. Yeah, it is catch up, but we are trying to do something with the traffic, whether it's the scallop streets to keep traffic moving, whether it's the signalization to keep traffic moving. We need to let people know out there what we're doing when we finish this CIP and what we're going to work on. The unfortunate part about it is we start working on all this, we're going to get probably issues resolving on the fact that, hey, my road's blocked, I can't get through, but unfortunately we got to fix it first before we start keeping that traffic flow. So we're going to get some of that as well. But I agree with council member Stip. We, we, we really need to start figuring out how to keep traffic moving as we do these development stuff. So with that, I guess, does the manager have anything to report? I do. Two quick items, uh, okay. Mayor and Council. On Saturday, we had two different events. I'll start with the Shred-a-thon. Uh, so Goodyear PD hosted a free Shred-a-thon, um, protecting the identity of residents and helping the environment. We had approximately 250 vehicles come through with documents to shred. We collected 5.4 tons of paper, which equates to saving 99 trees and 584 cubic yards of landfill space. And we wanted to thank the police explorers who volunteered their time uh, to make that event a success. But I also need to talk about our Hop and Hops event that we had on uh, Saturday night at the Goodyear Recreation Campus. Um, we estimate 8,000 attendees at that event. 
A couple more interesting figures. We had more than 50,000 eggs that were given out at the Easter egg hunt. Uh, local business, Saddle Mountain Brewing Company, served craft beer from the Hops Garden and gave away coupons in the golden eggs at the egg event. More than 500 families took their photo with the Easter Bunny, including Councilmember Campbell. Um, more than 600 wooden eggs were decorated at the Black Light Egg Station, and other events included sack racing, bounce houses, a bunny dunk tank, food trucks, live DJ, and local community booths. And we want to, again, thank all of the volunteers. We had more than 50 volunteers who helped that um, uh, event be super successful. So thank you. Well, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that, Councilmember Campbell, and the Easter Bunny. Otherwise, I would have mentioned that because I saw that on the Facebook. So that's all good. Well, the next meeting will be a work session on April 25th, beginning at 5 p.m. No further business. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>